Hi, this is section 5.5. I'm going to review uh, different rules of exponents. So I'll just get rolling right away in this first one. Um, it is 4p squared. That whole thing is being raised to the third power, and we're multiplying it by 2p. So there's a product going on between these two quantities. Uh, so what I'm going to do is first use a rule that says if I have a product inside, this, uh, inside these parentheses, each one of them will be taken to the power of 3. So I'm going to take 4 to the third power, and then if you take p squared to the third power, uh, it's a power to a power. So you multiply them, and you get p to the sixth. And I'm going to bring down 2p. So my next step then is to simplify this. 4 to the third power is 4 times 4 times 4. It is not 4 times 3. It is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. Bring down the p to the sixth, and bring down the multiply by 2p. So now what we're going to do is multiply the two whole number parts. 64 times 2 is 128. And if I have p to the sixth here, I can write this out six times, and you have one more here because it's p to the first. Or there's a rule for this where you're just if you have the same base number, you can add the exponents, so p to the seventh power. For the next one, uh, everything is just in a straight line going across. So the first thing we're going to do is use that rule, kind of like we finished here, where we're going to realize what numbers have the same bases and we're going to add the exponents. So 4 plus negative 2 gives me q to the positive 2 and 6 plus negative 8 gives me r to the negative second power. So again I added them going straight across and now what I see is I have a negative exponent. So there's another rule for that that says if we want that exponent to become positive we can bring it down to the denominator and change it to a positive 2. In the third example here, last one for this uh, slide, so I'm taking the whole thing, negative 3m squared, and you are squaring it. So what you're really doing is you're taking this part right here, and you're squaring that, and you're taking this chunk right here, and you are also squaring that. So negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. m squared squared, you would multiply the exponents, and you would get m to the fourth. Next one's. So with this one, we have a quotient, which is where there's a division on the inside of the parentheses. And this is going to work very, very, very similar to the uh, last problem that we did here, number three, how we had a product. This has a quotient, which means each of these values is also going to carry the exponent of two. So I'm going to first simplify this by writing it as three squared over five squared. And again, three squared means three times three, which is nine. And five squared means five times five, which is 25. Next one, you have a product on the top, you have a whole quotient going on here inside the parentheses, and it's all being raised to the power of 4. So each one of these separate quantities on the inside of the parentheses is each going to be raised to the power of 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is write 2 to the 4th power. I have r to the 3rd being raised to the 4th. So the power to a power means you're going to multiply, and that's going to give me r to the 12th over p to the, since it's to the first, 1 times 4 means I have p to the fourth. So the only step left to simplify is 2 to the fourth power, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. So 16, r to the twelfth, over p to the fourth. Final answer. Last one for this slide. Uh, notice, this one's a little bit different. A couple of reasons. First of all, we have a negative on the inside. And we also have this negative up here for a power. Whenever you see a negative exponent, I strongly recommend that you take the reciprocal, which I'm going to write down, you take the reciprocal of your fraction. So what we're going to do is take the entire inside of this, and I'm going to flip it. That's what taking a reciprocal does. Put the negative 5 to the denominator, and bring the 3p to the numerator, and what that'll do is change this power to positive 2. And now this problem looks very similar to like what number 5 does. So what I'm going to do to simplify this is take 3 squared, I'm going to give uh, p another exponent of 2, and I'm going to take the negative 5, and I'm going to square that quantity. So the only things that we have to square here are the numbers. So 3 squared is 9, p squared just comes across, and negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So again, the trick with that problem is simplify it by taking the reciprocal first, and that makes your power positive. Next ones. For number 7 here, 
what we're gonna do is multiply the whole number quantities first and then since again everything is written in a straight line all you're gonna do is add the exponents for each of these quantities um, for the quantities that have the same bases I should say so first thing is 6 times negative 2 is negative 12 q to the power of well I have 3 here and I have 1 here so when you add them you get 4 and then r to the first plus two more plus another one also gives me a total of four. So that's your final answer for that. Again, take the whole number part and multiply that first and then deal with the variables. Uh, for this next one, notice that I have some variables on top and that same variable on the bottom. We are gonna simplify this expression first and then we're gonna deal with this three on the outside. So let's clean up the inside a little bit by doing some subtraction of powers. Just like how when these ones are written in a line, when it's a product of powers going straight across, you add the exponents, this is a quotient of powers, so we're going to subtract the exponents. So four minus one means I have m to the third power on my numerator, and on my denominator, six minus eight means negative two, or if you realize that there's more n's on the bottom, if you were to write this uh, each of the expressions out in expanded form, you'd have six on top and eight on the bottom which means that you have n squared on the bottom left. Bring these parentheses down a little more. And that whole thing is being raised to the third power, which means now we're going to use our product. Um, I'm sorry, we're using the power to a power rule. So three times three gives me m to the ninth power over n to the sixth power. Next one for uh, numbers nine and 10, they look very similar. Um, but what I want you to identify in each of these problems is what is the base number? So in this case, 7 is the base. In problem number 10, negative 7 is the base. So whenever you have the number in parentheses, I could rewrite this expression as negative 7 times negative 7. And when you have a negative times a negative, it would give me positive 49. This problem over here, 7 is not in parentheses. So what you're actually doing is taking negative 7 times 7. So your base number is just regular seven. So that's gonna bring down the negative sign. Seven times seven is 49. So you can see that these two answers are different. That parentheses makes all the difference. Next ones. So this is gonna have a zero power in each of these. Uh, the second one looks pretty tricky. It's got a lot of variables going on. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of simplifying here and we have a negative exponent. So the first thing I'm gonna do with question 11 I have 5x being raised to the zero power. This entire thing, I don't care what's on the inside, if it is raised to the zero power, it comes out to one. Anything, anything to the zero power is one. So simplify that inside, bring down the one, and then multiply it um, by the rest of what we have over here, which again, I'm gonna use my rule where we have a product on the inside, so four gets squared, y to the negative sixth power, because negative three times two is negative six, and then I have x to the second. So now we'll clean this up a little bit. I have uh, the one times anything is that anything, so the one kind of goes away here. Four squared is 16. Now x squared is positive, so I'm gonna keep that on my numerator. y is being raised to the negative sixth power, so what I'm gonna do is use that rule from before where I can bring it down to my denominator and your power becomes positive. Okay, and again, that is your simplified final answer. Um, the part that made it a lot easier is once you realize this whole chunk goes away because five to the zero is one, you're done with that part and you can only focus on this part then. With number 12, there's a lot going on here. So let's simplify the inside first. Um, I have P to the zero, which again, that comes out to one. So that whole P is just gonna go away. Let's focus on um, the other variables on the inside. I have the two which is staying on the denominator. Since I have an M on the top, I have one up top and I have M to the third on the bottom. Again, if you were to write this in expanded form, you would have one M on top and you would have M times M times M on the bottom. So that's gonna mean that there are two more of those M's on the bottom, so M squared. And I'm gonna leave the N to the fourth on the numerator and bring down the exponent. So the only thing that I'm gonna do now, again, I strongly advise that you take the reciprocal now before you multiply that negative three to your powers. So if I take the reciprocal, I'm gonna bring two m squared to the numerator and I'm gonna drop n to the fourth to the denominator and that changes my power from a negative three to a positive three. 
And now we can use our rule where I have a product and a quotient going on here, which means two gets the third power, m is gonna be raised to the two times three power, which is six, and n will be raised to the four times three, which is 12. So your last step here is to do two times two times two, which is eight, and you bring over the variables, m to the sixth over n to the 12th. I think there's six more to go, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, next ones. We're gonna rewrite these in radical form, and then the last three we will write in exponential form. So right now, we have quantities that are being raised to a fraction power, and what I wanna do is rewrite this as a radical. So the denominator of the fraction is going to move to the index of the radical. What that means is when we write our uh, radical expression, you're gonna take the denominator five and bring it out here. The two X was in parentheses before, so keep that whole chunk in parentheses and the numerator becomes your power. So you really have two X to the third power all underneath this giant umbrella, Ella, Ella, with the five on the outside for the index. Yes, I just went there. Okay. Next one, so p is being raised to the seven halves. Again, this denominator becomes your index. So I'm gonna write this as the square root of p to the seventh power. Um, if you do not wanna write the two here, since it's a square root, you can make the two go away on the outside because it's kind of assumed that when we just see that sign by itself, we're assuming that it's a square root, which means a two would be your index. So you can simplify it like this, or you can leave it like this. Uh, the last one. Also a little bit different because we have a one on the numerator, it's not gonna change much. Take your denominator, switch color, take your denominator and bring it on the outside where the index is. Keep the negative four on the inside in parentheses and that whole thing is being raised to the first power. So you can simplify this again because anything to the first power is itself. So you can just bring this down as negative four. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the opposite of that. Well, what we're gonna do is take um, these radical expressions and we are going to express them in exponential form, which means for each of these, let's start by identifying the index. The index in this case, since it's a square root, the index is two. So what I'm gonna do is write my variable. The three is the numerator and the index, which is two, becomes your denominator. With number 17, five, um, I'm sorry, uh, the six on the outside, start with the index. The six on the outside becomes uh, your denominator again, and the fifth stays as your numerator. So the exponent stays as the numerator because it's your power, and the six, which was your index, slid to the denominator. With this last one, it's a little strange because I have a three on the outside. So really what I'm gonna do is just bring that three down right away, and we're gonna just focus on this expression right here. So my index is three, which means that my denominator is going to be three, and the exponent was four, so that becomes your numerator, and that is your entire expression, three times p to the four thirds, or you could bring the three over and just call it three p to the four thirds. So with this last one, with the three being outside, it is not being raised to the four thirds power, only the letter p is. If three were raised to the four thirds power, this whole chunk right here would be in parentheses. Okay, so seemed like a very quick video, but that is 18 problems of all various types of properties of exponents.